Hello students, welcome to Ohm Institute and this video let us discuss the questions asked in the Genko examination conducted recently on 14th of July and this we are going to discuss this video will discuss the questions from digital electronics yes the digital circuits there are 10 questions in all which is a good number okay and many of them are straightforward like definition or factual based theory based some others are numerical but they are also very simple so overall a simple level of digital has come up Okay, uh, and they have covered variety of topics including, you know, from ADC, from the logic family, from memories and from, of course, combinational and sequential circuits, Boolean is also there. So, which of the following logical gate is implemented? Okay, it's a simple resistor transistor logic that you are able to see and if you have studied that logic formally, you can directly see that, okay, these two NPN transistors are connected in parallel and it's going to be a NOR gate or you can basically do the analysis, okay. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, if V1 or V2, any of them is high, okay, suppose V1 is high. Okay, so the switch will be closed. Okay, here the BJT will be taken as the switch. Switch will be closed and the connection. Oh, just a second. Yeah. Okay, so the V out will be connected to the ground. Okay, and the output will be zero. So if any one input high, output will be zero. Okay, only when both are zero. Only when both are zero. So the V out, the output is pulled high. Okay, that is output equal to one. So that is what is the functionality of NOR gate. Correct? That is what is the NOR gate functionality. Going to the next one. Okay, a very basic question, but not the correct language used in the question. All the options you can match. Convert the given expression in the POS form, product of some form. Okay, in the product of some form. Okay, now, not in the standard, in the canonical POS form. See, standard is something which is reduced form. Okay, standard is something which is reduced form. So, the language is not correct. Okay, it should be written as given, convert the given expression to canonical. It is already minimized form. Now, you, you have to write down in the canonical POS form. Now, canonical means, okay, in the max term form. In the max term form. Okay, so A plus B plus C is already a max term. What is the max term? It should be a sum term, okay, containing the addition of all three variables, maybe in true or complement form. Okay, A or A bar something is there. B or B bar something is there. C or C bar something is there. This is a max term, A plus B plus C. All the three literals are coming up. Okay, all the three uh, variables are coming up. Okay, but now this A, okay. Now this A, okay, can have multiple cases like, you know, what are the terms missing? A is there, B and C are not there, okay. So A plus B bar plus C, A plus B plus C bar, A plus B bar plus C bar and last case will be A plus B plus C which is already there. A plus B plus C is already there, so I am not repeating it. I am not repeating it, okay. So, uh, you know, these are all the different max terms that are going to come up here. Okay, they are going to come up here, A plus B bar plus C and etc. And hence accordingly, option number D. Okay, A plus B plus C to will be there. Yeah, option number D accordingly will be matching up. Okay, or if you have the habit of converting from min term to max term, that is also okay. Okay, other way around what you can do is, other way around what you can do is, if you take the product, okay, A into A, that is A, then you have AB, then you have AC. Okay, normally this is simple. You should have that maximum knowledge basically. Okay, with A, what are the different maxims? Okay, can be made keeping A high. So for B and C, I have taken all combinations. Last one is A plus B plus C. Okay, but that is already written here. So I'm not repeating that. That is the only thing. Okay, now, you know, I've converted to the SOP format. Okay, and then you can see which min terms are coming up here. Okay, which min terms are going to be included here. Okay, like it is AB. Okay, AB means 1, 1. Okay, C is missing. So C can be 0 or 1. So 1, 1, 1 or 1, 1, 0. Like it is A, C, A and C, 1, 1. So B can be 0 or 1. Okay, A, A is 1. So B, C, 4 combinations. Okay, so this function is actually summation of which min term? So what are the min terms coming up? Okay, the first one is C. 1, double, 0, 1, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So 4, 5, 6, 7. If I write, if I code in decimal, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this should be equal to product of max term 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, min term to max term conversion. Okay, so what are the max terms? Okay, you know, what are the max term corresponding? It is the complement of min term. Okay, so M0. What is M0? If you take the min term 0, suppose, so that is A bar, B bar, C bar. Then you take the complement A plus B plus C. That is the first term. Okay, similarly, you know, you can write down all the four max terms. Answer will be option number D. Answer will be option number D. So from that way also you can do it. Okay, but the first way simple, what I've told you, that itself you can write down. No issues. Ah, simple, you know, basically you should know what encoder will do, 2 power n to n line. Okay, which of the following will reduce the number of data lines required for the transmission of occurrence of events? Okay, encoder, okay, from 2 power n to n, okay, from 2 power n input lines converted to the n output lines, okay. 
Uh, this is also something if you have studied demultiplexer, okay, how a decoder can be converted as a demultiplexer, okay, a decoder with enable input itself is a demultiplexer, you don't have to design a demultiplexer separately, okay, if there is, if you have a decoder with enable input, okay, that enable input will act as the data pin, okay, that enable input will act as the data input, the data to be uh, demultiplexed, okay, and the select line of the decoder, okay, sorry, the actual inputs of the decoder A and B, Okay, if it is a two cross four decoder, those lines, those input lines can be treated as the select lines of the demultiplexer. Okay, so a decoder with enable input is a demultiplexer, a theoretical question. Okay, directly from the notes you can say. Okay, this is also a simple one for a JK flip flop, the J input is tied, okay, to its own Q output, okay. Okay, what is that? The J input. Okay, let us form this JK flip flop. Okay, the J input is tied to its own Q bar. Okay, and the K input is connected to its own Q output. This goes here. Okay, now the flip flop is fed with a clock. Okay, what is the clock frequency applied here? Is one megahertz. Okay, what is the frequency? What is the frequency of the signal obtained here? First of all, what is the next state equation of the JK flip-flop is JQ bar plus K bar Q. Okay, now what is on the J? J is actually getting Q bar. So Q bar, Q bar plus K bar. What is there on the K? See, the K gets the output Q. So Q bar into Q. So Q bar, Q bar is Q bar. Q bar into Q is 0. So what is the next state? It will always toggle. It will keep toggle at every positive edge of the, you know, it's not given the type of flip-flop. So, let's assume it as positive edge triggered flip-flop. And if you treat it as the positive edge triggered flip-flop, if you treat this as the positive edge triggered flip-flop, okay, let me highlight these positive edges. Assuming the output is initially reset, okay, assuming output initially reset, but at every clock edge, okay, no delays, nothing mentioned. Okay, so ideal case we'll take at every clock edge, Q plus will be Q bar. That means the next state will be toggle of the previous. So if I start with reset, here it's going to become 1. Okay, and then again it is going to become 0. Then it is again going to become 1. Then it is again going to, on the next clock it will be 0. So see a repetition pattern has come up. Okay, and this is known as the time period. Okay, this is the time period of the Q waveform, which is equal to how much? This is known as the time period of the clock. So one time period, another one time period. So time period is 2t clock. So what is the frequency of Q? It is 1 by 2 f clock. Okay. 1 by 2 of f clock. F clock is how much? 1 megahertz. Okay. So the option is 0 0.5 megahertz or 500 kilohertz. Yeah. 0 0.5 megahertz. Options are in megahertz. Option number C is the very correct option. Simple one. If this, you know, again, if you have practiced digital, now you must be knowing that Okay, whenever flip-flop will toggle, will only toggle at every clock. Okay, so the time period of that output waveform will be twice of clock time period and frequency will be halved. Okay, it's a divide by two circuit. It's a frequency divide by two circuit basically. Okay, next question guys, number, number 36 of the paper which I had, the sixth one for the digital I can say. How a D flip-flop can be converted to T flip-flop? Very simple. Okay, if you have a D flip-flop, the next state transition equation is Q plus equal to D and you want to convert it to the T flip-flop and the next state equation is Q XOR T for the D T flip-flop, it is Q XOR T. Okay, so what should be D input? Okay, what should be D input? If you take the D as Q XOR T, okay, Q XOR T, it will behave as the T flip-flop, simple. No need to even draw the diagram. Okay, it's direct. No, no, if you, if you know the characteristic equation of flip-flops, it's a direct question, just tick mark, option number D. Number 37, n bit binary counter consists of how many flip flops? For every bit to store, you need one flip flop. So, n bit binary counter will have n flip flops. Okay, and it can count in binary total 2 power n states maximum starting from 0. Okay, 2 power n minus 1. Okay, so n and 2 power n minus 1, straightforward option number A. Okay, total number of states that it can count maximum 2 power n, but if the counting starts from 0, then 0 to 2 power n minus 1. Okay. Yeah. So simple one again, 38. Okay. Very simple numerical, you know, uh, again from a dual slope ADC type. Okay. Uh, for a dual slope ADC type, three and a half digit DVM, the reference voltage, okay. VR is given to you 100 and the first integration time, 
okay the first integration time is 300 millisecond okay for some input voltage okay the disintegration period is also given 370.2 milliseconds okay this DM, dvm will indicate what input okay so for this dual slope adc what is the relation you use what is the relation you use okay that is the reference voltage into this disintegration time which is 370 okay let me write down we are into this disintegration time into this disintegration period okay will be equal to vr into that integration time okay into that integration time or let me write it as integration period so reference voltage is 100 millivolts disintegration time is 370.2 milliseconds Vn into what is the integration time is 300 milliseconds. So, first of all, milliseconds will get cancelled. Double zero also I cancel. So, V in is simply 370.2 upon 3. Unit here left side mini be maintained. So, it is clearly 1. Okay, then 2, then 3.12. So, 123.4 millivolt. 123.4 millivolts. Option number A. 123.4 millivolts the very correct answer is option number a okay 123.4 millivolts done okay next one okay so latch is a sequential circuit that takes all its input continuously it will keep uh, watching monitoring the inputs continuously and changes the output accordingly at any time independent of a clock signal see now see normally such statements are made when you are distinguishing a latch and flip-flops okay but again to be very honest this is not a this is not really a good question to be framed because latches can also be clogged latches okay here of course the statement says as per the statement it, it is uh, uh, what what do i say it is uh, unclogged latch okay but you know the latches can also be clogged okay but they are level triggered again they are still different from flip flops flip flops will be edge triggered okay but even a latch can use a clock and it will be a level triggered device okay when you have a edge triggered when you have see normally people say without clock it is a latch with clock it is a flip-flop that is not the correct way of saying okay because even okay with clock it is not always a flip-flop okay flip-flop is a type of device which will be working on the positive edge or the negative edge of the clock that is an edge triggered device okay okay if a device is working on okay uh, on the level triggered of the clock level triggering of the clock that means whenever clock is one it will respond whenever clock is zero it will not respond that is a level triggered device that is basically level triggered latch okay that's what you know most standard books uh, you know most good books will tell you okay if you read the good books okay especially foreign author's book maybe morris Mann or good books like Chal, you know, you know, you know, the charles roth uh, digital book okay but some basic uh, indian author books say some wrong statement but yeah as of the correct options available i'll, I'll say the option as uh, see the intent of making this question is distinguishing the latch and flip-flop okay next question last from digital also again a direct one if you have studied dram you know how dram stores the information okay in the form of charges on the capacitor that's it option number b option number b okay so that's it guys these are the 10 questions from digital as you saw okay around four to five questions like this are statement based okay uh, or a direct tick mark questions okay okay only two or three some calculations are there that too also very formula based calculations so overall I would call it as again a simple level of uh, you know digital uh, logic place okay the questions which can be really solved within one minute that's what you have in the genco exam no? one almost one minute per question so all of these questions were of that level only in fact some of them were just 20 30 seconds you read and you answer if you have studied if you have not studied then of course you have to go to the next question okay bye bye this is Rakesh Lilija signing off keep subscribed to Ohm Institute channel okay for getting more such videos for you